Street, Corey Stockton and Tom Chilton. Anytime when we have a Battleground weekend, which is every weekend, uh, we will also have for the week during that period, it will be that week for that rated Battleground. So for example, if it were a Rathi Basin weekend, then for that entire week, the featured Battleground for rated Battlegrounds would be a Rathi Basin. So that helps us concentrate the queues. It's got a lot of players in there. And it also helps keep the gameplay changing from week to week. That way it's not really stagnant. You know, one week you'll have rated Arathi Basin, the next week will be rated Warsong Gulch, Eye of the Storm, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a quick mock-up of, you know, what the PvP queue could look like. Um, this is, you know, when you pop up your, uh, your PvP panel in the UI. Uh, as you can see below, there's still the you know, arenas and battlegrounds tabs where the arenas one is where you would see your arena team information, battlegrounds is where we would see all your different stats for your battleground activity. And then the queue there has both battlegrounds and arenas at the top, so you'd be able to queue from anywhere uh, for both of those. And you have your normal kind of pug battleground options, and then at the bottom there you've got, uh, in this particular example, the rated Warsong Gulch, because we're imagining that it's Warsong Gulch weekend. So how does it work? Let me tell you. So the basic idea here is you win a ba battleground, you gain rating. Your mileage may vary because it depends on the strength of the team that you're playing against and it also depends on your own rating. So you win a battleground, you also gain arena points. Now one of the core things here that is very different about the arena system is that there's no concept of a team. Uh, there's just the concept of you have to queue as a full group for the battleground. Uh, so in the case of Warsong Gulch, you have to queue with a group of 10 people. It can be any 10 people you want. So it could be, you know, a trade channel group that you formed. It could be guildies. It can be whatever you want. Um, for All Track Valley and for Isle of Conquest, the rated versions, we currently plan to use 25 people size for those battlegrounds rather than 40 person, so that you can kind of stick to the same sorts of arrangements that you make for a 25 person raid. You don't have to suddenly blow your guild to try to get in there. Um, also, what's different about it is we plan to give you the arena points as you win the games. Now this has implications for changes to the arena system in that we, with the arena system, we also plan to do something similar. And what we'll do is we'll limit the number of points that you can gain in a week based on what your rating was for the previous week. So the more rating you have, the more points you'll be able to get, but you'll still have to play the games in order to get those points. The reason to put a limit on it is so that it doesn't become a grind fest. We don't want players to go out there and feel like, well, it's the start of the season, I need 15,000 arena points or whatever to get all the arena gear that I need, all the you know PvP gear that I need, so I'm going to sit there until my eyes bleed and uh, play games until I've got all the points that I need. So it's really important to kind of follow the model of arenas in that it's limited in terms of how many points you can get. It's a lot the same as we have with PvE in that we have array lockouts in PvE, so you're limited in terms of how much PvE gear you can also get in any given week. You lose the battleground, and there's no rating loss, but you don't gain points. So one of the things that's very important here, it's a, an important distinction versus the arena system, is that because the, the group sizes are much larger for battlegrounds, any individual player has a lot less control over the outcome of the battle. So we think it would feel really, really crappy if you were losing rating and losing progress every time you got into a group that didn't turn out to be very good um, or just had a couple of bad games or whatever. So in Battlegrounds, your rating is, is almost more like the highest rating you've ever attained. That's essentially what it boils down to. Um, we plan to have two ratings. We have your personal rating and we have your matchmaking rating, kind of similar to the way the arena system works. The matchmaking rating will be able to go up and down because all that influences is who you play against and how many, you know, how many points that you build up uh, as, you, as you win or lose. Or, well, you don't get any points when you lose, but how many points you gain when you win. So here's a quick mock-up um, of how the Battleground uh, UI might look. We have, you know, your overall Battleground rating, and we plan to use the same kind of scale that we do for the arena system uh, so that, you know, we can be pretty clear-cut where we can say, oh, to get the highest level weapon, you'll have to have like a 2200 rating or something like that. 
Um, and then we'll keep track of your different stats for all the different battlegrounds, um, the kind of stats that you see on the scoreboards at the end of the battle. So you can see your kind of lifetime history or your daily progress as far as all the different stuff you're doing. The, the stats are mostly just because it's cool. It's uh, kind of fun to keep track of that stuff, your win-loss record, all that kind of stuff. Um, ultimately, that, that doesn't impact the gameplay itself. Um, it's just kind of fun to be able to see really what matters as far as the gameplay goes is if you win the game, you get points. So what do I get for doing Rated Battlegrounds? Well, we've got the Return of the Honor titles, for one. So rather than, you know, rather than using the same titles that we have for Arena, because those obviously kind of belong and make sense for the Arena system, we have the return of things like the High Warlord or the Grand Marshal. So at the end of the season, we will, you know, rate players according to what their rating was, um, almost like we, pretty much exactly like we do with the arena system, and we'll give out all the different honor titles for those different points that you are. And we'll figure out exactly what the breakdown is as to what percentage of players get which titles. We also will have epic ground mounts. So in a lot the same way that you get the um, epic flying mount, for, through the arena system, through the honor system, you'll get access to special epic ground mounts that you can only get through, uh, through the rated battlegrounds. And of course, in addition to that, as I mentioned before, you get arena points, so that's your ticket to badass gear. And you'll also get some guild achievements and levels out of doing it if you play alongside guildmates. Um, as Corey's going to explain in a little bit with the guild advancement system, we have a kind of approach where if you play with enough of your guild mates um, in, that, in the group that you're playing with, then it'll count towards any of your guild achievements, guild leveling, all that sort of stuff. So here's an example of uh, a dude with one of those old school honor titles, one of those old school battleground titles from back in the day. So that could be you if you're a Grey Knight Priest. So in addition to that, um, that, that pretty much covers it for Rated Battlegrounds. We also have uh, the concept of Toll Barad. So Toll Barad is something I mentioned briefly in the uh, panel of the Cataclysm preview. And Toll Barad is our new form of winter grasp for the expansion. Um, Toll Barad blends a combination of winter grasp and the Isle of Keldenos concept from Burning Crusade. I, uh, you know, hear a lot of times from players out there that they really miss the Isle of Keldenas kind of concept. It was really cool for world PvP because there was just a lot of spontaneous action going around as people went around doing their daily quests. And so we want to integrate that concept with what we have for Wintergrass. Um, hopefully also with spreading people out enough to where, you know, we have, uh, we have the capability to support as many people as possible at a time. So the idea here... Oh, and there's Toll Barad. That's kind of the, the general location of where it is in the world. We may end up having to move it somewhat. There may not actually be enough space in that part of the world for an island of the, of the size that Toll Barad's going to have to be, but uh, ignore that. <laughs> Maybe off the coast a little bit farther. So while the battle is active, in a lot, of, a lot the same way that Wintergrass goes active every couple of hours, then the, the daily quests shut down and it becomes the battlefield for, um, for Tall Barad and players will be trying to battle over control of the, the prison. Um, in Warcraft lore, there was a famous prison that was on the island of Tol Barad and that's kind of what players are battling for access to because there are secrets within this prison that both sides want. And what we're going to do is we're going to have different control points in different parts of the island that players will have to go out there and capture. And the current idea is that um, the first team to capture all the different control points will take control of Tol Barad. And that's one of our mechanics to help spread players out so they don't all end up in one place like the Wintergrass Fortress. Some of these control points will probably use uh, vehicle combat kind of stuff, and other ones won't. So if you have a particular preference about whether or not you like to drive vehicles around and bash down walls and that sort of thing, then we'll have that in certain parts. And then in other parts, it'll be limited to more kind of pure PvP. So while the battle is inactive, the winning team is given access to the Tolbarad prison instance. 